Hi everybody, it's Leon with Body Mind 360 Health and Fitness News. And in today's report, um, I want to talk about a lot of things that are going on and how they're kind of inter intertwined uh, when it comes to the continued COVID-19 pandemic, um, some of our social issues uh, that have been going on as of late, and also uh, the recession that's going on. Um, now, basically, it's interesting how oftentimes we talk about how art imitates life. Uh, but in this very case, I found through some observations, uh, life is really imitating art. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. And the analogy I'd like to make is one of us being in the middle of a big epic movie trilogy. Uh, but it's not meant to be entertaining. It is a kind of a dark reality and a dark take uh, on a movie trilogy. And I feel like right now we all are just getting out of the movie theater of what I would call um, reopening a new hope. But that new hope that we're kind of experiencing, uh, there is a bit of a, a taint on, uh, on it. And that's because while it feels like we're coming back, uh, a lot of people are letting their guard down when it comes to COVID-19. Businesses are starting um, to reopen. So there is uh, room to be optimistic and positive. But as we head into the second movie in this trilogy, as I call it, COVID-19 Strikes Back, we begin to realize that because of some decisions that we have made uh, and specific subgroups have made when it comes to strategies um, to kind of uh, reintegrating and uh, large, taking part in large social gatherings, uh, there is a danger that is still brewing uh, that I will discuss in this video. And there is also a dark twist to this dark Hollywood tale, where in what I will call return of the recession, um, we don't have this protagonist, all powerful protagonist to save the day, but potentially a real dark antagonist that becomes a threat to us all um, if we do not handle the situation seriously. So in this video, I will be discussing all those elements and relating some articles that will be uh, noted in the description below. Let's talk all about it right after the break. So I wanna make a real quick statement here. Um, everything I'm talking about here today, um, I always try and approach things from as much of a politically neutral perspective, uh, but some elements may be unavoidable, unavoidable uh, depending on how you read into my messaging. But I am trying my best to kind of offer uh, an overall perspective that doesn't have too much bias in one direction or another. Now on a surface level, the mainstream media paints a lot of parallels between the story of Star Wars uh, with what's going on now. Uh, if you watch the news, you get a lot of this, these viewpoints of a, an evil dictator uh, ruling through you know, of an iron fist with this suppressive regime. You hear about political conspiracies and intrigue, everything from COVID-19 being fake to being manufactured uh, as a way to control the population uh, as some uh, evil experiment. All things that really do sound like it comes from a science fiction movie. We see coverage of real social injustice that leads to uprisings, uh, to rioting that can be paralleled to kind of the, the rebels in the Star Wars universe as well, where they view uh, the police as this kind of stormtrooper or evil empire image that needs to be struck down or dissolved, fought against. But at the same time, while our focus has changed 
especially over the last week or two, to the social issues. There is a darkness that is brewing, a dark side uh, that is still a real danger, an unseen danger, which is the COVID-19 virus. It is still out there. It is still very real. And even though I've talked to many very inte intellectual and very smart individuals that downplay this virus in many cases, one thing that I am very confident about is the fact that no matter what you think, uh, it has been shown that this virus is very contagious. It does have a long incubation period and to a certain part of the population, it is absolutely deadly. This combination of three elements is really the problem because in situations where we let our guard down um, and we are in mass groupings, um, we are likely to have scenarios where people that potentially don't know they are sick and infected spreading this disease. And before we know it, it takes sometimes three days, maybe a week or more for people to realize that they are sick and that they've been in scenarios where they could spread it and then they spread it and all of a sudden the infection spread like wildfire yet again. Now in reality, the world is not black and white. Um, we can use these examples and these analogies uh, to movies, but in reality, the world is a ton of shades of gray. And so that's how we need to look at it here today. Now in reality, there is no evil uh, dictator. There is a president that some people like, some people don't. He may be outspoken um, and what he says upsets some people and resonates with other people. Now, these, this, this regime that he utilizes, especially right now, the police force to enforce uh, the law and keep the peace, these are not nameless stormtroopers. They are real life officers of the law with real families. Now, 99% of these officers are good people and they make good decisions on a regular basis. Um, the representation of the evil acts that did occur are an exception, not the rule. Now, in Star Wars, there is the resistance, the rebels, which are unequivocally uh, meant to be portrayed as the good guys. And while peaceful protests are a positive thing, it is a given right that we have. At the same time, there is a fine line between protesting and then rioting, looting. You get to those points uh, and you take a step further and killing of cops and we have crossed lines that should not be crossed. Now in Hollywood, uh, a lot of this is glossed over. You see, you know, uh, in action scenes, uh, cities are getting bombed, things blow up. Um, the collateral damage isn't emphasized. You have nameless stormtroopers that get shot and killed and you don't think about it twice. Uh, but in reality, in real life, this damage is real. There were at least two examples that I found of uh, retired police officers or police captain as well as an active police officer um, that were killed during these protests and riot periods. Uh, and not by accident. Um, you can see links to uh, those articles uh, in the description below. And that is a scenario where the lines were most definitely crossed. This is not eye for an eye. No matter how you look at it, doesn't matter if you're Democrat, Republican, what your thoughts are, that's not how our system works. So those are elements that don't really get focused on in our media. And so I do want to emphasize it because you hear the other side of the story a lot. Uh, this side of the story, uh, I noticed that I wasn't really made aware of it just by watching TV, but some people share this information with me. And I want to make sure that a complete picture of this is being shared with individuals that do watch my videos to be fair to both sides. Now, another element of that collateral damage is the damage that is being caused when the rioting occurs, when the looting occurs. We have been in a state where a lot of businesses were shut down and they were just about to open. And now all of a sudden, this looting, this rioting caused dozens if not hundreds of businesses 
to be damaged and or destroyed. Some of them were barely making it by, and this may have very well shut them down for good. Could ruin lives, ruin families. Um, and even, for example, people that were about to go back to work at those jobs, and they hear all of a sudden, well, the shop got destroyed. Um, maybe you will get insurance money, maybe funding to repair this, but it's not going to happen now, and I'm sorry, your job is no longer available. That element isn't emphasized nearly enough, in my opinion. So many innocent bystanders and bystand businesses that were damaged to this, and what did they do? They had nothing to do with the subject matter. They didn't kill anybody. They weren't racist. They weren't even related to cops whatsoever. Yet the emphasis on that is minimal. And all of a sudden, that collateral damage is acceptable. But it's not. That is the problem. Social injustice is real. I don't think anybody with a reasonable mind says that it, the bad things didn't happen and they don't need to be dealt with. But it does not justify the damage to so many other lives that is occurring. And we have to kind of keep things in perspective from my point of view that in this situation, again, yes, you can protest. Yes, you can uh, talk about the issues, but it doesn't give anybody the right to kill or do damage at this level uh, to other people's properties and other people's lives. And that is obviously one big difference between Hollywood and stories and the real life repercussions of what is going on. Now the other element to this, as I hinted to a little earlier, is that when you have these protests and you have these riots, the dark side element of this comes into play as well. That COVID-19 element that again has been minimized in the news as of late because of the focus on the social justice issues. Um, and so when you have these large social, social gatherings, unfortunately a lot of people, they're not protecting themselves. They're not wearing masks, they're in close proximity, um, and the risk of exposure to COVID-19 much, much higher. And again, because some of these people were already infected when they went to these protests, they may be spreading it without even realizing it. But now, as time gets a little further away from these protests and riots, we may start seeing repercussions. This goes also hand in hand with the general issue of how people have been acting. And again, if we're using the movie analogies, kind of the resistance, the rebels to the system, uh, even before the social justice issues, there were whole bands of groups across the United States that resisted these calls for isolation. They also refused to wear masks in public. Um, entire states had a very anti um, kind of uh, isolation movements. Uh, I know Texas was big on it. Uh, Arizona also had resistance, other uh, states as well. But now what we're finding is there definitely seems to be a co correlation between these states that had these extra potential exposures and much larger numbers of new cases of COVID-19. I remember on Memorial Day or after Memorial Day, there was all these pictures, all these videos uh, from all over the country uh, of people just celebrating in mass, hundreds of people huddled together, no protection, um, all celebrating Memorial Day. And I was just thinking, oh my goodness, this is just a giant cesspool of potential germs and COVID-19. Uh, and again, unfortunately, you don't know about this the next day because it takes a little bit of time for people to actually show symptoms and spread. But now, uh, according to another article uh, that you're going to see, um, it's gotten to a point where this fear of a second wave of COVID-19 has become more and more real. In fact, Arizona is now the first state to have to reenact their emergency protocols for hospitals. Uh, in fear of kind of reaching that same level of pandemics as we had before. And who knows, by the time I post this video, how many more states potentially could be following suit. This is a real fear, this is a real concern. On top of all this, it was just this last Sunday that the World Health Organization um, reported that we had 
the a new peak level of worldwide contagion uh, of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Now, I do want to preface this, uh, and again, you're going to see a link to the article uh, below that I'm referencing. Um, the emphasis is on worldwide. There are certain countries that are less developed in Africa and South America that are heavily impacted, especially Brazil was brought up, huge amounts of cases spreading. Now, a lot of these lesser developed countries can serve as a really good example of what happens when you don't have the infrastructure and the institutions to protect and support um, protocols that we have here in the United States, for example, where we're able to isolate, where we're able to put extra resources to our medical facilities. And for them, this COVID-19 seems to be spreading like wildfire. The reason this should resonate with us is this could also happen to us if we are too lax in this transition to opening up um, our businesses and kind of going out into the quote unquote wild again. Now, this brings us kind of full circle uh, when it comes to the levels of impact to the third movie of our trilogy, again named uh, Return of the Recession. Now, uh, you will see in an article that I posted uh, below as well, or the link to it, uh, to nobody's surprise, uh, it was uh, made official uh, just the other day uh, that the U.S. had entered a recession uh, back in February, which is actually before the peak of this COVID-19, but obviously it became much deeper uh, of a recession much more quickly because of the multiplying factors of the COVID-19 pandemic, the economic shutdown, and a huge impact that had on us overall. Now, the fact is that we do need to reopen but we have to do it in an intelligent way. Now, um, in California, I know we've been trying to phase uh, things in carefully. Uh, other states, some of them who have been very resistant to this lockdown process, uh, were much more rapid uh, in their reopening. But overall, the main idea is this. Um, if we don't reopen, then some of these businesses that are teetering on the verge of collapse are going to collapse. Some have already collapsed. Uh, articles and stories of bankruptcies of companies, big and small, are rampant. Uh, unemployment is tremendous. Uh, but in order to reopen effectively, we do have to approach it in a safe manner. Now, I'm all for people going back to restaurants and eating, especially at ones that do follow that protocol social distancing, new cleanliness uh, um, standards, um, as well as just general occupancy guidelines. And when you go to those restaurants, you should be able to enjoy yourself. Now, I also saw when there were, uh, the openings first started, there are some businesses that just, uh, not in California, but in other states, where people just flooded uh, to these restaurants and there were hundreds of people and again, it was almost a show of resistance, like, like, look, haha, you know, we're not going to put on our masks. We're, this is all a big joke, uh, and we're going to resist the protocols uh, and just all huddle up. And again, that is kind of a resistance that is going to, in this situation, potentially cause a lot more problems uh, than any kind of show or example uh, of resistance to kind of the system, quote unquote. So again, in my opinion, uh, the correct way to approach this is to have those guidelines, but do give access uh, to all those businesses that need us for survival, as long as they're practicing social distancing. Now you as an individual, if you're gonna be going to a place where you know there's gonna be crowds, there's gonna be lines, you're gonna be around other people for prolonged periods of time, breathing the same air, um, wear your masks. You know, I see people every day resisting masks or asking, you know, do I have to wear a mask here or there? And if they're kind of forced to do it, they'll wear it. Otherwise, they just choose not to. If you have your mask, why wouldn't you wear it is the question. There's plenty of times when you're at home where you are not going to wear it. You're in your car. You don't have to wear it. But again, why not be safe rather than sorry? If we can just kind of adapt to the reality that there's going to be a, a new norm for a while. 
and again until we have a vaccine to this COVID-19 um, I don't know how long it's going to be people will ask my opinion you know, how long do I think this will last the reality potentially for a while and if we just again open the floodgates then really this dark side uh, can really permeate uh, and kind of take over and the last thing that our country needs or any country needs is for things to get so bad again that the government feels like they need to try and force a second lockdown because I don't think a second phase of isolation um, is going to not necessarily be survivable but it's going to be much more damning and damaging than the first one and if we're not able to do that then the loss of life could be tremendous uh, so as much as we can we really need to ease into this process and if people just cooperate then things are going to be a lot better uh, and again we don't want to lose sight of that uh, focus no matter what else is going on there again if people want to protest and gather do it but you know wear your masks if you can it's hard to tell people to practice social distancing when they're protesting and they're angry but do what you can uh, and for everybody else you know just be safe um, if you are going to be in social gatherings you know pick and choose how often you go into mass uh, gatherings if you can avoid it and stick to smaller gatherings people that you know you trust that are do isolate appropriately that would be preferable now I also know that if we don't learn from our mistakes we're going to be doomed to repeat them and from my personal feelings the last thing we want is a sequel to the Corona Wars trilogy because if there is something that I have learned from the Star Wars trilogy is that if we were to have a coronavirus or Corona Wars uh, trilogy sequel chances are yet again it would get progressively worse and worse and at the end of the day I don't think anybody would be fully satisfied and when we relate that to the real world that is just a whole bunch of trouble so let's all be safe and make these this corona wars trilogy just that a trilogy and we move on this is leon of body mind 360 health and fitness news and i'm going to see you guys next time on your journey to a healthier body and mind mm -hmm.